All right, this is a quick primer on RC gear, which includes the transmitter, the receiver, and then whatever you want to connect to the receiver, which might be servos, motor controller, or whatnot. First up, the transmitter. This is a six channel transmitter, which means there are six things on it here that I can vary. The stick position up and down, left and right on both sides here. Then there's a switch and a knob. They're transmitters which have uh, more or fewer channels, and usually you pay more for more channels. Uh, there are several different technologies for the transmission of data between the transmitter and the receiver. This uses a frequency modulation technique called PPM, which sends out a series of pulses. Each pulse, uh, the length of each pulse corresponds to the position of one of these channels. I've got the receiver here and I've opened up this box and I've got the board on the table here and I'm probing one of the points, the point right after the FM uh, filter, but before where the receiver splits up the pulses into the different channels. So I've, I can see all of the pulses here in a row. This signal is repeated 50 times per second, and we can freeze that in time on the oscilloscope. Uh, so each pulse represents one of the channels. So if I change the position of one of these sticks, we should see one of the pulses change here. And check it out. We see a change. And if I go left and right, we see another one change. And we can see them both change at the same time. It's nuts. Here's the switch. And then the dial. Pretty sweet. So what happens after this on the board is the receiver splits this up and it sends only one pulse to each servo channel. And we can take a look at one of the servo channels here. I'll hook it up to one of them. And so here's that one pulse. So as we change this, we'll see that pulse change. But this is what the servo is receiving, remember. But the servo won't see any of the other pulses. Makes sense. And if we change the other channels, we don't see any change here. Pretty sweet. So let's take a look at how the servos work now. So here we have just a standard hobby servo. And there are two things that you can notice from the outside. One being the output shaft here, which is splined so that you can put any number of servo horns on it to suit your application. They have holes on them and it's meant for attaching things to, which are going to rotate to this, uh, position specified by this electronic input that you can see over here. So the uh, electronic input has power, ground, and signal. And then here is the splined output. Now, what's cool is how this works. And we're going to open one up here. Da, da, da. So here is the top of one that I've already opened. I'm going to take the top off. And we see all of these gears. This is the output. And then these are uh, reduction gears or... Uh, or the opposite if you're looking the other way. But our motor is connected to this one at the bottom and if we spin the output we can see that's the one that spins the fastest. And that's great because we want a high torque output and our motor is low torque but high speed. So that makes sense. And we, if we can see on the underside, which you probably can't, there are two holes. There's one that's connected to, the, to the, that high speed input which the motor in the servo is going to be connected to. And then there's another hole which is connected to this output, this splined output. And that's going to be our feedback, which is going to tell us what position we're at and which direction the motor needs to turn to get the output shaft to that position. And we can see that unit here. Here's the brains of the operation. This is the motor. And the motor, you can see, has a little gear on it. And then this here is a variable resistor. And the, the resistor changes resistance based on the position of that output uh, shaft. And so we have our pulsed input coming in. And then we have a little pulse generator on here, which generates pulses based on the resistance of this potentiometer. Then there's a comparator that compares the pulse that's generated on the board versus what's coming into the board. And then it knows which way the servo needs to turn in order to make those pulses the same, which happens when this resistor, which is also the output shaft, spins to the right position. So it's really sweet. It's a, it's a feedback loop that tells the motor which way to turn based on the resistance, which is the current position. And I'm going to show you that in action now. So here I've got the inside of the servo again. I've got the potentiometer and the motor. I've got my stick over here controlling the position, the desired position. 
And so if I change the desired position, the motor is going to start to turn, which is trying to get this potentiometer to the correct position where it's happy with the pulse length that it's generating compared to the pulse length that I'm generating over here on the transmitter. So I'm going to change it. And there we go, the motor starts to spin. So it's really wanting to get to this potentiometer to the right place. So I can tweak it by hand. This would normally happen through the gear rate, through the gear reduction, but here we go. And the motor's slowing down, we're reaching our position. And there we go, that's just about it, we made it. If I go, if I overshoot, the motor changes direction and tries to get me back to that point. There we are. So on the hobby market today, there are two types of servos. There's a standard servo and then there's the digital. The standard one, it receives the desired position data from the receiver uh, 50 times per second and, and it checks its internal state at that same rate. The digital one gets the same data of 50 times per second from the receiver, but internally is checking its position data 300 times per second. That's because there's a microcontroller inside and that microcontroller can also means that it can do more complicated control algorithms like PD, PID, depends on what the manufacturer wants to put in it. But in the end, it means that it can get to the desired angle faster, provide higher torque at low angle deflection. It's, it's basically better in operation, except for it uses slightly more battery and it costs more. So you have to decide which one's better for your application. So I've set up a few things here in the basement with RC gear. I've got a, a relay on this guy, a motor controller, um, some servos. Check this out, I think it's pretty cool. You know, it's a nice uh, desk fan if you are getting a little hotter. I have... Yeah, I think that's a little more like it. And then if you're really in the festive mood, ah, there, that feels real nice. And then we, oh, oh yeah, party time. <clears throat> and then, uh, I think RC gear is really cool. In fact, you know, how cool do I think it is? I, I, I would, I, I, well, let's see, I, I would have to break this out and I'd say it's somewhere around fantastic, no, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. <laughs> it's really cool, you can do some neat stuff.